we're back with a brand new video this time we're back with a brand new spongebob conspiracy coming to us from the man alex bale i did react to the squilliam fancy sun theory that he had made so if you guys haven't seen that video make sure you guys go and check that one out and that video was absolutely mind-blowing bro i said squilliam is like a fraud okay his whole lifestyle is fugazi and he's got a secret like love of interest towards Squidward, right? Just absolutely blew my mind. This time we have the television theory, the last Squilliam theory. I had no idea where the hell it was going and it, it blew my mind. So I'm definitely a super interested to see what we got today. If you guys like this video, make sure you spank the like and subscribe button and ring the bell so you guys get notified whenever I upload. And if you guys are... <clears throat> And if you guys have any suggestions of videos you would like to see me do, make sure you leave those down in the comments below, because I'm up anything. But without further ado, a Spongebob Conspiracy, the television theory. Let's see what we got. The show Spongebob Squarepants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group it's of not. puppet masters who are always watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. This is a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show Spongebob Squarepants, and I believe it's all actually intended by the creators. And I'm gonna- So wait, you okay? So you're telling me that behind the scenes, there's like, it's like Big Brother, bro. There's like, there's a group of people and they just watching everyone and everything, making sure everybody's doing what they supposed to do. Everybody's in line. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. This is a lot. This okay. Is the television theory. It's like Big Brother. The television theory. You guys had a great reaction to my Squilliam Fancyson theory, and I had a lot of fun making it. Squilliam, you lying, deceiving bastard! I didn't even realize that! I trust. Squilliam, you. Who is that handsome young devil? Alex! Alex, shout out to Alex, bro! Alex done show you showing me some love, I done showing Alex some love, that's crazy! It's crazy, bro. It's, it's, it's you guys fire. Had a reaction to my <laughs> That's fire. I'm making it. Squilliam, you lying Bro, I ain't even gonna cap. I look good as fuck in this video. Good looks, Alex. You picked the right clip, bro. I didn't even realize that. But trust me when I say that what I've discovered this time is much, much bigger. To start this theory, we have to go back to the very beginning of the very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. I remember this. This was the one with like the. This was the one with like all the, like the anchovies and like in, in, in the in the crusty crab, right? Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life, home of one of my favorite creatures, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple. You silly. So let me ask you a question: Who's speaking in this clip? Well. Obviously, that's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times throughout mm -hmm. the show. Ah, uh, Goo Lagoon. A stinky mud puddle for you and me. Ah, uh, the crusty crab. Through these doors pass all the many kinds of undersea life. Pops boating school. Where diligent students learn Did we ever find out who this narrator actually was? Exactly it. Cause I know there's that other narrator, he's like the fish guy, like he does the news, you know what I'm saying? Did we ever find out who this guy is? The narrator. Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Caillou was amazed that mommy had made a rainbow, just like in the picture. But there's something different about this narrator. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. The ocean. From above, the simple blanket of water. Okay. <laughs> I see that. Okay. <laughs> ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom teeming with life. What if I told you that he's not just some random disembodied voice? He's an actual character in this universe. Here we are again really? at the Bikini Bottom Boating School. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's Boating School exam. But boating School exam. This is the last test for the year. And if SpongeBob does not pass this one, it means another whole year of boating school. Oh, oh yeah! Oh fuck! 
Okay, look, he's got the, like the scuba gear. He's got his can. Okay. Okay, that makes that makes sense. The fourth wall, and we actually get to see the narrator and the camera he's been filming with. The show SpongeBob SquarePants is not just a cartoon. Everything we see is a part of a nature documentary television show being filmed by scuba divers. And if you're still not convinced, I searched really, really hard and found an old SpongeBob DVD bonus feature that basically confirms everything. Since before time even existed, land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name of this miraculous place? Bikini Bottom. Poring over the mass of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these six creatures, I went to college! They rolled their cameras and took notes. And now, finally, we can learn all of the things that these smarty pantses have to teach us. Life lessons. Okay, so this is, basically, this is saying that that bikini bottom <laughs> that that bikini bottom is is a nature documentary being filmed by humans with with like cameras in and, and they they found like these intelligent okay i'm still so confused but my brain's not working bikini bottom I don't know how it can get any more clear than that. Yeah. Now, if you rewatch the show with this new information in mind, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird, unexplained running gag of a human hand interfering with the characters. It's even in the beginning of every episode in the intro for the show. Yeah. Maybe the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating SpongeBob for the suds. <laughs> well, Mr. SquarePants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Oh, Hans! Oh, Hans! It makes sense that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of the Brown, dirty ass After all, they <laughs> show without SpongeBob, but that's not the only reason why they interfere. Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous. Okay, so you're saying that the humans that are that are sort of filming this nature doc and, and keeping an eye on Bikini Bottom and monitoring them, watching them and stuff, you're, you're saying that they are interacting with the residents of Bikini Bottom to keep them healthy and safe, right? Just just to keep keep the integrity of all, all of the people in there. Okay, okay having one of the most absurd, confusing endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming out of a Patrick costume and attacking the characters. A real gorilla? Yeah, I remember that. When he stays indoors. <laughs> that episode is a classic. A classic. And then as soon as SpongeBob begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? <laughs> oh. Well, it, it's a great question. The, see the, George, they're onto us. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Bro, the crazy thing is, is I remember watching that as a child, and and I never like questioned it, bro. I, I never questioned it, bro. I just thought it was hilarious that there's a there's a gorilla under the sea pretending to be Patrick. You know what I'm saying? I never, I was never, I, I never questioned. I was like, hmm, how the fuck is a land breathing animal such as a gorilla so thriving and surviving down at the bottom of the sea? Yes. The logic of the scene. My this gosh. Happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? <laughs> oh well, it, it's funny you should. I mean, the, see the, the George, they're onto us. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Bob <laughs> <So, laughs> is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being yeah, just a little too weird. That's fucking weird. Now, we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. 
Every other land animal we've seen underwater wears a helmet and is drawn in a cartoony style. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. So I believe both the gorilla oh. and the horse he rides away on are humans wearing costumes. The filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. It's starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary Oh anymore. my... Oh my god! Oh my god, I didn't even realize! Yeah, they all, all the monkeys, they was wearing helmets. And all, all the live action people were humans. Above land! Oh, that's mind blowing. Okay, and so now he's saying that these filmmakers who were supposedly just monitoring and documenting the tales of Bikini Bottom are now completely interfering in the daily shenanigans to sort of create this show, create this picture that is more entertaining that they want to. Okay, okay, now it's. I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Alex, oh my gosh, how do you. It's more Dude's of a, a genius. TV show made for entertainment. Who knows what other absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining and profitable. Although, based on the people's reaction, it doesn't always seem to pay off. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Ah, Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob is watching his favorite Saturday morning show, The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal, and wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. I mean, listen to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. Exactly. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua? No oh artificial Oh my... Oh my god! The capitalist regime has infiltrated Bikini Bottom! Oh no, nah, this is not good. This is... This is not Who good. Are you talking to? Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show is actually from the surface world. They are human after all. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're gonna sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Hang on a second, why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size as all the fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish? Uh, and, yeah. and, how the hell are they breathing under the water? How I, I never noticed the size discrepancy, right? I never actually noticed that, right? That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy, right? But how do they breathe? If these are humans, how do they breathe? Let me know, Alex. Let, tell me, Alex, what you got? Whatever, I'll, I'll come back to that one later. The show doesn't okay. even just hide product placements. I guess not. In the episode Model Sponge, they literally trick SpongeBob into making a commercial for a human product. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Very well. Loose the pants! Hans, there's my star! What's happening? What, what's happening? In this sea, you'll be cleaning bathroom fixtures. Okay, let's see where's my cleaning utensil. Oh my god! Oh my. So this whole thing was just an advertising ploy by Big. by Big Sponge. To sell more sponges. They are they are trying to this is this is propaganda. They are they are indoctrinating the youth with advertisements of, of, of sponges. Oh my gosh. They are trying to they are trying to knock Mr. Clean off the map. Oh no, your bathroom is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new sponge. <laughs> Household chores are a snap with new sponge. It clean sinks. <laughs> just look at that shine. This is just like in real life how SpongeBob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. So far, I've shown you that the. My question is right. Real life. We're talking real in reality, right? Do they have? Sp 
SpongeBob sponges. Like every time I've gone to, to like a store and I see some type of SpongeBob merchandise, right? You've seen it there. It's usually like backpacks. I got a SpongeBob t-shirt. I got SpongeBob socks. You know what I'm saying? It's it's stuff like that. It's like clothing, apparel, hats, you know what I'm saying? Those little those little plastic like watches that you would get you think you got a Rolex, you know what I'm saying? But I've never actually legitimately seen a SpongeBob sponge, like a legit sponge you would use for cleaning with SpongeBob's face on. I've never actually seen that. And I feel like that's the most genius product. Why the hell isn't that everywhere? show SpongeBob SquarePants is actually a documentary television show, but the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But that brings us to an important question. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go back to that clip where SpongeBob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of boarding school! Aww. What happened? Oh, nothing, SpongeBob. You just struck another pedestrian. Mrs. Puff calls him a pedestrian, which sounds more like she thinks he's just some random bikini bottom citizen. The oh. different types of marine life in SpongeBob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to believe that- So you're telling me you're telling me that the producers are are using are leeching off of the everyday lives of the bikini bottom gang without their knowledge for them to be able to produce their tv show and place their own propaganda within it oh my gosh this is oh my gosh this is this is literally the definition of capitalism bro literally leeching Leeching off of the backs of, of, of the of the people doing all of the hard work while you reap all the benefits. Oh, this is okay. Yeah, I can see why this is a big issue. Just think these filmmakers are another weird type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, the gorilla and the horse immediately get nervous and run away when SpongeBob questions what's going on. No. <laughs> oh. Because they don't, because they don't want the, okay. I mean, I mean she, yep, George yep, Davis. I got, got it. Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Now, there isn't a ton of footage of the characters interacting with the filmmakers, but I dug really, really deep and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. The smoking this is an old gun. This from 2004 made to promote the SpongeBob movie. SpongeBob, what kind of jellyfish is that? It's not a jellyfish, Patrick. It's a spaceship. Oh. Hey guys, it's Carlos from the Zone. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? It wants to learn about our world, and it's chosen us. But yay! Oh, we've been chosen. A submarine comes down to SpongeBob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. SpongeBob and Patrick are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea oh that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. Oh See my! Bye! Movie? What's that? I know. La, 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 la. Oh so my! It's pretty clear at this point that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed. And oh! Gosh! So he, they literally interacted with the with the with the humans. You know what I'm saying? Human said, "Hey, by the way, we're making a movie about you." They didn't even they don't know what the hell that is. So this whole time they're going about their daily lives, unknowing that they're being filmed and exploited for the entertainment of the humans. Oh, this is okay. Okay. Some yep. That have this, this is it. Level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat SpongeBob, and the director fish that directed the commercial for the human world. What makes these characters so special? First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before he directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened to SpongeBob. Out of all the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Oh Almost like the filmmakers my. didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom so they wouldn't risk everyone finding out about the television oh show. My then there's the Dr. Fish. God. We don't know where he originally came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes he's purple with orange hands, sometimes he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Dr. Manowar from the Jellyfish Convention. And now it only hurts when you touch it. Oh my! Why does he have so many different disguises and identities? And wasn't he part of... Wasn't, wasn't he also part of Squilliam Fancy Son's fake gang as well? 
So this guy's a phony. This this guy's a con artist. He's out here con conning the innocent people of Bikini Bottom. Oh my gosh. What is he hiding? I believe hidden throughout Bikini Bottom are spies like this who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main characters and make sure everything goes to plan. There's so many suspicious characters in Bikini Bottom that it could literally be anyone. The mailman, the hot dog vendor, old man Jenkins, it could literally be anyone. But what if I told you that the biggest spy of all isn't some random side character, it's one of the main characters of the show. Someone who's been there from the very beginning. Someone who's not even from Bikini Bottom. Oh my god! Someone who is it? Who's not even from the ocean. Oh my god! That's Karen! Right. It's Karen! Sandy Cheeks. Oh my fucking god! That makes the absolute most sense! If they're gonna put spies in this underwater sea in in this underwater city right then most likely the spy is the one character who's not even from the ocean right this is this is a tv show created by humans right and the only character who has had any real interaction with humans continuous interaction with humans is the 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 land squirrel oh my gosh sandy cheeks is the thrill-seeking scientific squirrel from texas who lives underwater in her tree dome but why did she come to bikini bottom in the episode chimps ahoy we find out she was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions but why does she need to be underwater to make inventions she could have just as easily have made any of her inventions on land. It must be extremely expensive to maintain a giant dome of air underwater. There is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day. And many of the wacky, entertaining episode plots are driven by an invention Sandy creates. Everything she does is a calculated move to carry out the hidden agenda of the filmmakers. Her entire friendship with Spongebob and the other characters is built on a lie. Don't do this to me, Alex! Don't, don't do this to me, okay? Sandy's, Sandy's a demon, alright? Sandy is, is a member of the goon squad, okay? I fuck with Sandy Cheeks okay now you want to sit here and tell me that her whole persona is fake and she was sent here by the humans to spy on the people of bikini bottom and that her whole life that she's been living under the sea has been nothing but a ploy oh don't do this to me please don't do this to me i don't i, I like, like sandy i like fuck with sandy higher friendship with spongebob and the other characters is built on a lie but you're probably saying sandy is a sweet friendly squirrel there's no way she's behind this you're not convinced yet that's okay because what i'm about to show you is so mind oh my gosh so insanely revealing that okay it's actually the whole reason i decided to make this video the whole Get reason for the big one i'm ready season 10 episode 10 feral friends is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery during a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less evolved, real-life versions of themselves. Sandy is completely caught off guard by this and decides to call someone for help. And take a guess who she calls. The... The humans?! Hello, French narrator speaking. Oh my god, the narrator! seen this episode right i've never I've, this is this gotta be like after i i'd already like grown up a little bit and i you know didn't watch spongebob actively what the french narrator oh my gosh bro my mind is just blowing up my mind is just exploding dude this is this is crazy this is crazy hello french narrator speaking Ah, Sandy Cheeks, how is it hanging? Oh, it's not hanging too good. And he just conveniently has a picture of the of the Texan spy. Oh my gosh, I feel so betrayed. I, I feel so betrayed by my girl Sandy, bro. This is oh, 
Oh my gosh! Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Huh, yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Holy shit! Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going My on and gosh. ask for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire fucking time. He even has a picture of her on his desk. This is where I originally planned on ending the video, but there is still one small issue with the television theory. Just what? one nagging plot what? hole that contradicts everything. If what? this is all a television show filmed by scuba divers, then how are we seeing inside the buildings? It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying thing that keeps this theory from being complete. The spies! It's the- it's the spies! You know what I'm saying? Or maybe- maybe they- one of the- one of the spies, right? Sandy Cheeks has been in all of those places, right? She's been inside the Krusty Krab, she's been inside SpongeBob's house, Probably been inside Patrick's house, Squidward's house, right? She's been in everywhere. What if she was running around just just laying bugs everywhere? You know what I'm saying? Putting the little spy cams, the little hidden cameras. What if she was just around, you know what I'm saying, spying on people by putting these little cameras in people's in, in, in people's houses and buildings and shit? Oh my gosh. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras inside of everyone's yeah. homes, but we never really see anything like that. Holy shit. Season 6, episode 24, Truth or Square. The SpongeBob 10th anniversary special where they reveal lots of stuff about the characters. But the most damning piece of evidence comes from when the characters get lost in the Krusty Krab vents and end up in a room full of monitors showing live footage of all of their homes. Oh, my Oh, my Oh, my You get down from that bed this instant Hey, there's my house Look, it's Sandy And who is the character responsible Bro, if it wasn't If it wasn't Sandy if it wasn't Sandy who was running around setting up these cameras, bro, then who I need whoever did in a prison cell, bro. You put it in Sandy Cheek's bathroom. You put it in her bathroom, you freaky, you freak, nasty pervert. Jesus Christ. Unless it was Sandy herself, like I was and saying. Who is the character responsible for all of these hidden cameras? Mr. Krabs, why do you have cameras watching us? No, oh, but, uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure you all floss after every meal. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Dental hygiene? Eugene, you lying bastard. Of course he would sell out his friends for a quick buck. And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what Wait. happens next. Wait! Wait! Hey, who are those guys? I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? <laughs> All right, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. A cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the characters this entire time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. The case is closed. Oh. My the God. Is something to show so you're telling me. You're telling me that Mr. Krabs greedy ass took a bribe from the humans to set up all of these hidden cameras around Bikini Bottom to spy on people and he knew about it because he was the one who did it and they paid him off because he loves oh my god that makes so much sense bro by the way Mr. Krabs you fucking pervert putting hidden cameras in people's bathrooms what the hell is wrong with you Mr. Krabs I need you locked away in a jail cell show is consistently alluded to from the very first episode to the newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it and our characters will discover the real truth about their world. But regardless, that's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. What? You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't you? Oh, right. no, I, I forgot about it my damn self. I'm okay. You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't you? Alright, here's a quick bonus theory. 
Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were two superheroes that fought crime underwater and protected the sea from evil. Yes. Whether or not they actually did this or it was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. But you can't retire! There's evil afoot! So, they decided to live the rest of their lives in Bikini Bottom. And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision oh, to shrink themselves. Oh, I forgot the about the Wumbo! I forgot about the Wumbo belt that makes things smaller! Oh, Alex, why do you do these things to me? And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using Mermaid Man's shrinking belt. The case is closed. This is... Again. Bro, I cannot... I cannot keep watching this video, bro. Every... I've done... Squilliam Fancy Son is a fraud. Sandy's a fraud. Mr. Krabs is a sellout. The French narrator's a fraud, bro. Apparently, every person in Bikini Bite, the doctor, is fucking a fraud, bro. This is... I, f I feel duped, betrayed, led astray, run amok. Bamboozled and hoodwinked. Oh my gosh, bro. Every just um, my is my life a lie? Am I a fraud? Am I even real? Cause apparently all of these people in SpongeBob are fake phonies who are not even real and they live fake lifestyles. Dude, this is crazy. Alex, I don't know how I don't know how this dude Alex does this, bro. I don't know how he puts these things together, bro. But this was an another another beautiful work of art, another masterpiece, bro. I know, obviously, you know what I'm saying, this is all just like entertainment and stuff like that, bro. But the fact that it all somehow still makes so much damn sense just blows my damn mind, bro. And shout out to Alex for putting together another absolutely crazy video. Let me know what you guys thought of this video down in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like some of it? Did you hate some of it? Let me know what you guys are feeling. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Like I said at the beginning, if you guys have any suggestions of videos you would like to see me do, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to spank the like, subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.